Ladies and gentlemen, today is a special video. We're going to have a Power Rankings video as I rank my top 10 NASCAR drivers of 2022. Of course, we're seven races into the season, and I think we have a pretty good picture who for who may be the championship favorites going into the playoffs this season. So weekly, starting today, we will have Power Ranking videos. I will rank my top 10 in order, and then maybe some of the drivers who just missed out as well. You guys down in the comment section below will also get to put your top 10 in. What do you think of my top 10? And uh, this is based off of, obviously, statistical success, a little bit of the eye test, but I think the stats go to show exactly how these drivers are ranked, and hopefully I rank them correctly. Like and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content as we roll into the rest of this video. Starting things off at number 10 this season, I have Joey Logano. I think he's the 10th best driver so far in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2022. His stats would include he is 5th in the point standings, driver standings overall, only one top 5 on the season, 3 top 10s, 34 laps led, which uh, a little bit of a spoiler alert, that is actually the second lowest of the top 10 on my power rankings list this year. I think 10th is a good spot for Logano. The reason I have him ahead of others who I will state here in a little bit uh, that did not make this list, basically just off the fact he is 5th in the point standings. He's scoring a lot of stage points. He's not really getting a lot of great finishes. Again, he's only got 3 top 10s in the 7 races this season, 1 top 5. But uh, scoring a lot of stage points, he doesn't really seem to be there towards the end of the race as much. Uh, Coda was a big factor in that. He ran top 10 most of the day, got a lot of stage points, was in a wreck late. Uh, Daytona 500, he had stage points, was in a wreck late. Uh, so I do uh, Atlanta, again, the same thing. He got in a wreck late. Uh, th that is the big thing with Joey Logano this season. If he can actually just get to the end of the races, I think he would be right up there with the regular season points leaders uh, in the race for the regular season championship that are up higher on this list. And those drivers have actually gotten good finishes, and that's why they are where they are, first, second, third, and some, uh, somewhere in the point standings. Uh, what you'll notice off of this list as well going forward is it seems like a lot of the drivers, at least in the driver standings, if you look at the standings, for the NASCAR Cup Series, they don't have a lot of win, or they don't have any wins that are up at the very top of the leaderboard. But the guys in the middle to the back half of the top ten, they're the guys with the wins on the season, but they're not as consistent. You'll see that on this list as well. At number nine, I have Kyle Busch. He's led 99 laps this season, so just one away. He also only has one top five finish, but he does have one more top ten than Joey Logano. In fact, four top tens for Kyle Busch would tie him for the most of any cup driver so far this season. He is 10th on the point standing, so a lot lower than Joey Logano, but the reason I have him above is because of the laps led, because of the fact he does have the extra top ten. Uh, these two are really interchangeable. Uh, the fact that uh, he has that many more laps led than Joey Logano, again, goes to show that he runs up towards the front. When Logano's running up towards the front, he's not leading laps. He's more in that third to sixth range when I say he's driving up at the front. Kyle Busch, when he is up at the front of the field the few times he has been early in the season, he's competing for the wins. He's leading laps. And ultimately, this last weekend at Richmond, it looked like he was going to have a good shot at a top three run again. I don't think he would have been up there in the run uh, late. I've kind of stated that in streams throughout the course of the week uh, uh, due to the penalty, I don't think it cost him that many positions, but it did cost him a few positions. I think he could have had a top five finish perhaps in that race. Uh, so Kyle Busch, if he can, again, just kind of finish stronger, I think that win is going to be coming a little bit quicker than what I think most people anticipate. At number eight on the list, I have the defending champion, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson, uh, most notably the reason why he is this low in the power rankings list and why he's a, and the reason why he is outside the top 10 in the regular season point standings overall is because of the DNFs. He has three DNFs a season. That ties him with Denny Hamlin, who has had a bad start to the year, excluding his win this last weekend at Richmond, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Those are the only two drivers that have three or more DNFs this season for everybody who has ran the full schedule so far in the NASCAR Cup Series season. But outside of that, I think we're actually seeing a lot better Kyle Larson than what most people may think to uh, that we've seen out of Kyle Larson so far this year. He has 59 laps led, which is less than Kyle Busch, but he does have a win this season, which is why he is ahead of Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. Really, that's the only reason he's ahead, considering the DNFs and considering he has at least more laps led than Logano, but not as many laps led as Kyle Busch. He's 12th in the regular season standings, as I mentioned. He's really been outside the top 10 ever since that third race of the season concluded. Uh, he is tied for the second most top fives this season. He has three top five finishes, including this last weekend at Richmond. That's very crucial because, uh, again, 
he is running up towards the front. I'd say more often than not, he is getting better finishes than Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. So even though Kyle Larson only has one win to start this season, and he's in a little bit of a rough stretch with those three DNFs, when he's finishing races, he is finishing them very well. And uh, we go into a lot of tracks yet this season that we uh, saw Kyle Larson win at last year. Remember, Kyle Larson only had one win through the first 11 races last season. It was after Talladega where he won nine of the remaining 27 races to end the season. So look out for Kyle Larson after Talladega when we go to tracks that he runs really well at. In fact, tracks he has won at, like Nashville. He competed at Pocono in both races last year, uh, finished second in the one, and then he blew a tire on the final lap while leading there. Uh, another good track for him. Obviously, Michigan, he's won at a few times. We race there in the summer. We go back to Richmond later this year in the regular season as well. Uh, he's won a couple road courses last year. Once Sonoma, Watkins Glen, we have to go there yet. So look out for Kyle Larson in the summertime. I think he will heat up eventually, but as of right now, he's in the back half of the top 10. And as far as drivers that I have just outside the top 10, here are the best of maybe the rest before I go further on from seventh on up to the top of the list. So starting off, I do have Tyler Reddick off of the power rankings list this week. If I would have made the power rankings list even a week or two earlier, Ky or, sorry, excuse me, Tyler Reddick would definitely be in the top 10. He does have a few top 10 finishes this year. He only has a couple of top five finishes. Uh, he does have one more top five than both Kyle Busch and Joey Logano, but he has the same amount of top 10s. The main thing that hurts Tyler Reddick is kind of like Kyle Larson. He's not finishing uh, some of these races. He does have two DNFs on the year, which is hurting him in the regular season standings. He's actually further back in the regular season standings than any of the 10 drivers I do have on this list already. So although he is showing very fast speed consistently, he uh, doesn't have a win as well. So considering that I only have a couple drivers on this list that don't have wins because they are much more consistent than what Tyler Reddick is and the fact that he doesn't have that playoff security. He's not locked in. I do believe Tyler Reddick will get a win this season. I did predict him to win a race in my preseason prediction video, predicted him to make the playoffs. I do think he will do that eventually. Uh, maybe it's this weekend. You never know with uh, how good he has run. He's good on dirt tracks. I think he'll perform well at Bristol Dirt, but uh, for right now, he's just barely on the outside of the list. Another driver barely on the outside of the list is Kevin Harvick. Harvick has no wins this season, but he's been very consistent. Coming off his season best second place finish at Richmond, he's eighth in the regular season point standings. Much like Reddick, though, does not have a win compared to the other drivers who don't have a win on this list. That's why I have them on here versus Kevin Harvick. And Daniel Suarez for Trackhouse Racing, also just on the outside of this list uh, that I didn't want to put in. He has led a decent amount of laps this season. He does have a stage win as well, obviously this last week at Dakota. And for Daniel Suarez, also, it is the finishes that hurt him. Yes, he does have really good finishes, much like Tyler Reddick this year, but the races he isn't finishing in the top 10 are very, very poor. He is right around the bubble in the regular season point standings. If he had that win in the playoff security, he would definitely be in the top 10. But for right now, we have to leave him outside the top 10. Don't be surprised to see any of those three drivers hopping in, maybe even after this weekend. Coming in at number 7 on the list is a driver who does have a win this year, much like Kyle Larson, and that would be on a short track at Phoenix. I have Chase Briscoe at number 7. Chase Briscoe has led 128 laps this season. Like I mentioned, he has a win. He also has a stage win this season. And Briscoe has two top 5s, two top 10s, and he is ninth in the point standings. The only reason I have him ahead of Kyle Busch and Joey Logano is because he has the win that those two drivers do not have even though he is behind Joey Logano in points, he is just ahead of Kyle Busch in points. He also does have more laps led than both of those drivers as well. I mentioned Kyle Busch has led a lot of laps. Well, Briscoe has led over 100, and he has led even more laps. Uh, the only reason I have Kyle Larson below Chase Briscoe is because Larson is four spots in points below Briscoe, so Briscoe's average finish is a little bit better than Kyle Larson's. At number six, I have Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. has three stage wins this year. That is tied for the most. 97 laps led, one top five, four top ten finishes, which is also tied for the most in the series. And he is third in the regular season point standings. The reason why he's not higher on this list is because he doesn't have a win. I think this last weekend proved that he is very close to maybe getting that win. We know he's very good at Richmond. He's very good at Martinsville. We go to Martinsville next. I would not be surprised if... 
Martin Truex Jr. has another great performance this weekend. If he wins a race, he's definitely going to move into the top three on my list. That's the only reason, really, that keeps him from the top three is the fact he doesn't have a win, and he's not quite as consistent as the other two drivers that don't have a win that are above this list. At number five, I have another Hendrick Motorsports driver by the name of Alex Bowman. Bowman broke through with his first win of the season a little bit earlier this year, a couple weeks back at Las Vegas. He is seventh in the point standing, so I will say this year compared to other years of the past, he is showing very, very good consistency uh, compared to years past, at least through the first seven races. He is also tied for the most top tens this year with four top tens on the season, so uh, good for Alex Bowman, at least for right now. He has two top five finishes. The really big thing for Alex Bowman that needs to improve, and I think a lot of people could agree, is the lap sled. He has led 16 laps this season. That is by far the lowest of any driver on my top 10 in the power rankings. The reason why I have him in fifth is because of his recent success. Again, he has that win at Vegas. Really, in the last five races since Las Vegas has happened, he has four top 10 finishes since then, and uh, not only he has been able to do that, but again, he's got a couple top fives. He just finished second two weeks ago at Coda. Almost broke through with another win. He very briefly was side by side for the lead on the final lap there. And uh, I will say Alex Bowman is coming out of the gate probably stronger this year than any other year in his career. He could move up, but then we've also seen with Alex Bowman in the past that his consistency over the summer months tends to lack that he gets maybe comfortable that he's in a playoff spot. I don't know what the case is. I know he's talented enough to run consistently in the top 10 in points every year, even though he has not shown that. Despite winning four races last season, uh, the playoffs have definitely helped him get a little bit higher points finish over the last couple of years. But look out for Alex Bowman. If he could, could, if he could be excuse me, consistent this summer, I think this could be a year he could, could compete for the championship and be a real threat. At number four on the list, I have Chase Elliott. He is uh, the second highest of drivers on this list that don't have a win this season. Uh, for Chase Elliott, he's tied for the points lead still. He's the only driver at Hendrick Motorsports without a win. He's also tied for the most top tens this year with four. Only one top five on the season, and he's led 91 laps. The reason why he is ahead of Alex Bowman, he's tied for the lead in the regular season standings. Alex Bowman is seven, so although Bowman is more consistent than any year, Alex Bowman has been consistent. Chase Elliott has been one of the most consistent drivers this season. He's got one of the best average finishes of any driver this season as well. He also is very close to getting that first win. I'd say more closer to getting that first win than really anybody we've already mentioned uh, either on the list or just outside the list that doesn't have a win yet this year. So uh, Chase Elliott, I think he'll break through. We have a bunch more road courses left to go. And even ovals he's won at before. He's won a race at Charlotte before. He almost won the 600 a couple years ago as well. I think that could be a good race for him. He has a win at Talladega in his career in the spring race. That's coming up in a couple weeks. He's very good at Martinsville. A couple runner-up finishes there. And we race there this weekend. So I think Chase Elliott will definitely get a couple wins before the playoffs starts this year. He was my preseason pick to win the championship. He's not let me down early in the season. Although I thought he would have a win by this point because I thought he was going to win at Coda a couple weeks ago. He still had a top five finish. And he has still been running very, very good this season. Uh, he scored almost more stage points than anybody else in the circuit this season or on the on the series this season. So Chase Elliott, number four on my power rankings list this week. And at number three, I have the highest rated Hendrick Motorsports driver, William Byron. Yes, William Byron is the highest Hendrick Motorsport driver on this list this season. In my opinion, he is the best overall driver for Hendrick Motorsports this year. In statistical categories, 270 laps led. That's second most in the NASCAR Cup Series this season. He has three top tens, three top fives, which is also tied for the second most in the top five cat in the top five categories this season. He is fourth in the regular season point standings. We saw this with him last year. That he was very, very consistent. He was literally in the top five in points all season long. He had one bad race at Talladega in the playoffs last year, which was why he got eliminated in the round of 12. If it wasn't for that, he could have been in a uh, front run for the championship that season. Unfortunately, again, that did not work out for him, but hopefully he has better luck this year. I think he could be a threat for the championship four. That's one thing that uh, winning is definitely represented in this uh, points format. But no matter what, at least one driver at the end of the round of eight can lock themselves into the championship four on points. I think a driver like William Byron could potentially have that happen. He's very good at all three tracks that are in the round of eight. He won at Homestead last season. 
Uh, so I have him at number three on the list. He also has a couple stage wins this year also, on top of the fact that he's fourth in the regular season point standing. So William Byron at number three. Really the only reasons I have him ahead of Chase Elliott and uh, Alex Bohm and Kyle Larson. Laps led, again, 270. It's second most in the Cup Series. Uh, he has more top fives than all three of those drivers. Well, he's tied for the most with uh, Kyle, tied for top fives with Kyle Larson, but uh, he has more top tens than all those drivers. And uh, not only that, but uh, two stage wins versus any of the other drivers at Hendrick Motorsports. He has more stage wins than him as well. And uh, outside of Chase Elliott, that's the only one he is behind in the regular season standings right now. Elliott is tied for the lead, but he would technically be second of the tiebreaker. And Byron's in fourth, just a couple spots behind him. Byron has that win also versus Chase Elliott, so I had to put William Byron ahead of Elliott this week. At number two on the list is probably one of the hottest drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series as far as talking points go, and that is Ross Chastain, the Watermelon Man. If I would have made this list after Coda, I think I would have him at number one. But this last weekend at Richmond, he didn't perform too well compared to the other driver I have number one on this list, and that was the breaking point of swapping him from number one to number two. Because I did make a list before this, but I wanted to make a list and then go off of that list before I made the first video of the season for the power ranking. So Ross Chastain is number two on the list. He does have the most top fives this season of any driver, and all five of those, or sorry, all four of those top five finishes were top three finishes, the podium streak he was just on a little while back. He has led 156 laps this season. That is the third most in the NASCAR Cup Series. He has one stage win on top of that one race win. He's sixth in the regular season point standings. The only reason he's really not higher, those three finishes outside the top 10 this season for Ross Chastain have been really bad. He was 18th at Richmond and he was outside the top 25 at both Daytona and Auto Club. So if he could just get the consistent finishes of the races, he is not competing for the wins in, which I think is kind of a, it's a statistic that I guess is around with a lot of aggressive drivers. It seems like if you're not winning, you're way at the back more often than not with these very aggressive drivers. We know Chastain to be a very aggressive driver. If he can just harness that in, uh, that is going to make him great. And I think the same thing kind of could be said with Tyler Reddick. If they could just kind of harness that in, uh, and I almost thought with Ross Chastain finally getting that first win that that would maybe happen, but then we see the run-in he had with Blaney this last weekend at Richmond, and it's like, okay, maybe it's still there. So uh, we'll see in the coming years, obviously, how Ross Chastain will progress. But as far as this season goes, he's on a hot streak. I have to have him on this list. I have to have him high up on the list. Uh, based off of recent success especially, Ross Chastain is number two on the power rankings list. And at number one, no bias at all in this but Ryan Blaney is number one on the list. He has led more laps than any driver so far this season. He has the best average finish of any driver so far this season. He has scored the most stage points of any driver so far this season. He is tied for the regular season points lead and has the tiebreaker, whatever that tiebreaker is when uh, the wins aren't in place. But he has the tiebreaker over Chase Elliott as well, so he is the points leader overall. He is tied for the most stage wins this year with three stage wins this season. He's tied for the most top tens this season with four all that statistical category, how could you not put Ryan Blaney number one? Ryan Blaney will get a win at some point this regular season, much like most of the guys that are on, pretty much every driver that is on this list that hasn't had a win yet this year. They will break through before the playoffs start. I don't I don't think Logano, Bush, Blaney, or Elliott, or even Truex too, uh, they will get their wins. It's just a matter of how many. Ryan Blaney, the big thing for him, can he keep this consistency up? During the course of the regular season, that has been his lackey point. Usually, he kind of tends to run really well at the end of the season when the playoffs begin. So it's kind of shocking that in the regular season, especially this early in the year, he is as consistent as what he is. Because usually, we don't see that till the end of the year. He's kind of someone that starts the season slow. May take half the season before he gets that win. But then once he gets that win, he gets the consistency. The consistency is coming before the win this year. And uh, I think that is good for Ryan Blaney. Maybe this is the breakout season he could finally make it to the championship four for the first time this year. If he has the speed he has had at most tracks so far this season, I think he'll be really good. Uh, I, outside of those categories, he is obviously leading. Also, he's leading laps led with 334 laps led. Uh, again, I mentioned William Byron is second in laps led this season. Blaney's a whole 54 points ahead of him. We go to Martinsville. That is a place that Ryan Blaney finished second in both races in 2020. And then in 2021, he finished second in the uh, race there in the spring and won both stages in that race. So Ryan Blaney is very good at Martinsville. 
I, him and Truex, I think, are going to be the two drivers to beat this coming weekend. That's a spoiler for my predictions live stream. Uh, I think one of those two are probably going to get the win this weekend. You can maybe throw Chase Elliott in there, too, with how consistent he's been and how good he is at Martinsville. But in recent years, it's been Blaney and Truex outside of the fall race last year. Blaney and Truex are the two best drivers at Martinsville in the last three seasons. And I do think that one of those two are likely going to go to victory lane. Obviously, if Blaney wins, he's staying at number one on the list. Even if he competes for the win and leads a lot of laps, he's going to stay at number one on this list. Unless, you know, maybe some guy like Byron or Chastain wins their second race of the season this weekend. Then, you know, two wins to none. I think I had to get the extra uh, edge over the, even over the points leader at that point, considering this points format. But uh, Ryan Blaney undoubtedly was number one for me this week. I tried to talk myself off of Blaney being number one this week because I try to make this as unbiased as I can. And Ryan Blaney is my favorite driver. But looking at all the statistical categories, he's leading in almost every major statistical category this season. So you got to put Ryan Blaney at number one so far this year. Uh, again, like and subscribe for more daily NASCAR content. Comment down below what you thought of my power rankings this week and maybe what are your personal power rankings for this week for the top 10. Who is your championship favorite seven races in? I'll be doing these videos weekly during the week like uh, today's video and this week's video. We'll have another one next week following the Martinsville race. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hit that like button. Again, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.